Five. Alright, let's try this again now. Hey, pack it in. Come on, let's go. So I'm gonna get mad. Mum ate you. You got five minutes, get rid of them. If I can do something like this, then that's a triumph for mankind. What happens when two hard-working mums down tools and go on strike for three days, leaving their homes and children in the hands of their husbands? Which dad will cope best with the challenges the mums have set? Sofa-bound Steve, who smoked more fags than he's made hot dinners? Or musical mechanic Dave, who's more familiar with bodywork than housework? Parenting advisor Anna Rayburn will be watching to see if they make light work of the challenges ahead. Dads often say, how hard can it be to stay at home with the children? Well, they're about to find out. First, let's meet Steve and the rest of the Wilson family. There's mum of four, Jane, who never gets a moment's peace. Her 13-year-old daughter, Beth. 10-year-old Mitchell. Daniela, who's eight. Finley, just 13 months. And their self-confessed slob of a dad, taxi driver Steve. He doesn't actually do a lot. <laughs> I don't feel guilty at all because I've just had a hard day's work. He just sits there all the time just watching telly or falling asleep. It's the hunter-gatherer thing in me. He thinks I sit here and drink coffee all day. and He's got no idea what goes into running the house. <laughs> So before Mum packs her bags, let's find out how much Steve really knows about his own family. What's my favourite item of clothing? Your favourite item of clothing could be your scarf. <sighs> no, your brown leather jacket. What's my favourite food? Don't know. What's my favourite teacher name? I don't know. Rubbish! <laughs> what size clothes do I wear? Oh, ears eight and nine. Dad, that's hopeless! <laughs> oh dear, Steve, you scored one out of four. No wonder Mum's going on strike. Dear Steve, now's your chance to see how much I do and how little you do. As I had to do without a dishwasher for years, you have to do without for the next three days. Two things you need to know. The baby groups are ours today at 10.30. So you better get your skates on. And it's about time the cupboard under the sink was cleaned out properly. Lots of love, Jane. Good luck, you'll need it. Oh, no. <laughs> Jane settles into a new life of luxury. Three days at the Marriott St. Pierre Spa. Wow, isn't that lovely? Oh, and look at the view! It's wonderful! <laughs> and both dads had better watch out because, unknown to them, the mums will be watching their every move. It's half six in the morning, and to Steve's horror, mum was true to her word. The dishwasher's locked up and off limits. <sighs> Steve's got five mouths to feed before school, so the self confessed slob had better get his skates on. You better be folding that up. Oh, my God. <laughs> you be on that bed and Mummy will not be happy. Come on, we need to get you dressed. It's 8 o'clock now. Finn's dressed. Success. Kids' packed lunches are done, they're all dressed. I've got half hour to kill, so I'm having a fag. <laughs> yeah, Mum's on strike. Our taxi driver's got no problems ferrying the kids to school. But there's still plenty to get on with back at the house. Try and unlock that, and then I'll have to wash up. And with six busy mums on their way over, there's no time to lose. Now the fun starts. <coughs> the ladies and the babies are coming round. 
At half past ten, we haven't got long to get out of the, the house. Go have a fag first. And a cup of tea. <laughs> Hello, come on in. Hello, come on in. Hello. First one that talks about periods. How do you think things are going, being a mum? It's a doddle. I don't know what people moan about. <laughs> Two coffees, one with. I can't hang on my road, I've got tea to make. <laughs> Right, I'll be in in a minute. I've just got to have a fag. Just two seconds. So what does our parenting expert, Anna Rayburn, make of Steve's busy morning? Steve's been very organised about getting all the kids ready for school. Finds the mum's meeting a bit more stressful, though he did put a brave face on it. I shall be very interested to see how he goes on from here. Now it's time to meet our second family, the Fars. And they are stay-at-home mum, Gemma, her little angel, six-year-old Georgia, and three-year-old Cleo. And their part-time DJ dad, laid-back Dave. Dave does very little around the house. He does the odd thing every now and then. I stay away from the ironing because I don't like to do that. Mostly he plays on the PlayStation. Yeah, I think I do relax a lot, yeah. Who looks Mommy. after you most of the time? Mummy. Yeah. She thinks I'm really going to struggle with it. But I'm a modern man at the end of the day, so I can, you know, I can cope with these things. But before Mum turns the tables on our part-time DJ, time for a little test on family life. Where do I keep the shoe polish? In a box in her in her cupboard. What's my favourite colour? Yellow, I think. What's my favourite telly program? Got no idea. What's my favourite restaurant? McDonald's. Two out of four is not bad, but it's not enough to stop Mum from going on strike. Dear Dave. I'm going on strike because I'm fed up of doing absolutely everything. Now it's your turn to, turn to do all the cleaning and ironing and cooking. One extra chore, I want you to paint the hallway pink, my favourite colour. The tin's in the kitchen, good luck Gemma. Mm, so. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, time for Dave's first task. Get both girls up and dressed and Georgia ready for school. Georgia, we got to get ready for school, love. I forgot about school. I think she's left this out because I can't put, fold the ironing board up properly. And I think she's probably put that out there for a reason. Something like this, I think. <laughs> like that, yeah? I got it. It's not that hard. Pretty easy, really. Come on, get down here now. It's not a game. I mean that now. <laughs> Come on, let's go. So I'm going to get mad. No. <laughs> Georgia, when you finish your teeth, come straight in here and get ready, please. The dressing part is one thing, but how much does Dave know about girls' hair? <laughs> Gemma, she'll um, do it in ponytails and, you know, do it nice for them. And, I, you know, I don't think I could do that. Right, leave your head still now. Just leave it still. Let's have a look. That's all right, actually. That's all right. Georgia! I've never ever done this, I'll tell you that for nothing. Hang on, now this ain't going well. From exhaust fitter to hairstylist in one single morning. I'm going to leave the house so I'm not getting to school. But what do the girls think? Mine is my hair. Mine is a horrible hair. They're off to school after just two hours. But has Dave remembered everything Georgia needs? I want a pack of I ain't got one now, have I? 
Just have school dinner to do. Is that right? Yeah. Hey, I've got a packed lunch. What I'll do is I'll go shopping yeah. and I'll get you something to eat for sandwiches and I'll come back. Yeah. I've got her lunchbox. I'm going to have to go come back with it later. Dave seems phased by anything too feminine or girly like ponytails and he forgot Georgia's packed lunch. He's going to have to get a bit more organised if he's going to survive. Hard-working mums Jane and Gemma are on strike. They've left their husbands to juggle the kids and chores. While well, they relax in the luxury spa for three blissful days. <coughs> what the dads don't know is the mums are watching their every move. It's lunchtime in Bristol, and while taxi driver Steve cracks on with a list of chores left by the missus, 13-month-old Finlay keeps a close eye on the pets. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not kill ourselves, eh? Yeah. Good boy. Good boy. <sighs> All right, ready for dinner? Yeah. No. No? Let go. Time for a spot of lunch. <laughs> You're an animal. He's tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There he goes. Well, that wasn't too bad. He cries for longer than that for me. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. I can. It's James out there, and he starts screaming. Now we know he's tired. Just bring him in here, sit in front of the telly, feet up, and just fall asleep with him myself. And she can't moan because I'm calming him down at the same time. <laughs> Steve has picked up the kids from school and he's got his afternoon mapped out. It's ten to four and it's cooking tea time. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. But eight-year-old Danny has got a special request. Dad, I want to get cakes. Do you? Yeah. Well, we got some chocolate. Okay. We got some Rice Krispies. Okay. So we can have chocolate Rice Krispie cakes. Okay. And like a typical teenager, Beth sticks her oar in. You've got to put syrup in them. What for? So it sticks. The chocolate will make it no, stick. No, The chocolate just falls apart. <laughs> While Danny looks after the cakes, Dad goes back to preparing the dinner. We always have something quite healthy, usually with vegetables, plenty of vegetables with it. Well, Jane, the menu's a little different this time. It may look good, but the mashed potato has gone to mush without me even straining it. The sausages are going to be raw in the middle. The baked beans are going to be burnt. And the sweet corn, I was going to warm up, but apparently you don't warm up sweet corn. So, who knows what's going to happen within the next half hour. Oh. Right there. Do we want mashed potato like mummies, or lumpy and horrible? No, it's nice. She puts lots of butter in it. You want it lumpy? Yeah. Your mum is lumpy and nice. We don't want it smooth and watery. He always says my mash is too lumpy and he likes it really runny. <laughs> and the kids hate it runny. Oh, come on. <sighs> Steve's gourmet feast is almost on the table when he gets a nasty surprise. Beth's invited some friends round and Dad's not happy. <laughs> well, they got five minutes to go then. Tie everything down, don't let them nick anything. He gets really irate if they call for her on the way to school and come inside the house. So if they came around for any length of time, I really don't know how he'd handle it. Sorry, I'm going to have my tea now. Mum, ain't you? No, but she said I'm on your charge. You've got five minutes, get rid of them. Oh, I don't give a talk. Beth's in a huff. But with a bit of food inside him, Steve realises that a problem shared is a problem halved. 
Come on, eh, kids? Uh, uh, whoa, 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 let's, let's just do a bit of delegating here. Uh, you two with the funny hats on, you can wash up and wipe up. Oh, that's that food, eh? No, 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 no. Oh, you're not too well. No, because I feel like <laughs> It's your mess. Let your boyfriend tidy up. <laughs> yeah, no, you do. Come on, boys, <laughs> do it. Chop, chop. <laughs> Who needs the dishwasher when you got this lot? <laughs> All these kids in this one house. Takes my stress levels <laughs> right up here. But yeah, I'm pretty tired. And I'm just ready to collapse. Well, Steve's had a busy day, but let's find out what our expert, Anna Rayburn, thinks. Steve coped really well with baby Finn, except for the scissors incident, but the teenagers were a bit more difficult. But he coped by giving the visiting youngsters the housework to do, which was a bit of a cop-out as far as he was concerned, but teaches them responsibility beautifully. Across town and with his eldest daughter safely at school, exhaust fitter Dave is following Gemma's instructions to repaint the hall. Dave won't like painting the hallway pink because the house is all going to be pink and lilac once that is painted. <laughs> I find pink a bit sickly to tell the truth, but this wouldn't really be my first choice of colour. I mean, I quite like blue. And she said I can have one room blue if I want. It's a toilet. It'll probably be the toilet. <laughs> I'm going to paint all this wall, yeah. Stay there where I hide, not all of it. She'll love it anyway. No, she won't, because we'll have to paint all of it. She wanted this originally, but I think it was me who said, well, we'll just do half. No, I said do half. But there's no stopping Dave once he's on a roll, and he's getting a bit philosophical. Gemma's the type of girl that is the girliest girl of all girls. <laughs> I mean, you get some girls that, that ain't so girly. You know, they're, they're a bit, I don't know, boyish, I suppose. <laughs> She says I ain't got no feelings, and just because she, you know, it's because she got loads of feelings, and you know, I got feelings. I just, I, I don't show them as much. That's all. <laughs> this is my feminine side coming out now. But Dave's been concentrating so hard he's forgotten to look down. Disaster. Oh well done, Dave. Oh dear. It gets worse, Gemma. Look where the cat's been. Oh Dave. Oh, this is why I say just leave it to me, I'll do it. <laughs> You've got paint all over your feet. Oh, my God. Dave, she's breastfeeding. Oh, this is set up. This oh. is honestly... It's conspiracy against me. Poor cat. Look at the state of you, honestly. Go on outside. So that our paint dry. Sorry? And it's all getting a little too much for Dave. Oh, my word. This is going on. This is coming on top now, big time. What have you done now? You're making me angry now, love, because you're supposed to be sitting down. She didn't care about that. Let's have a look. What have you done? How did you do that? I'm down. Oh, dear. The daddy's trying to get on with tea. The tea's going to burn out there now. Why don't you, can't you just please sit down for me and be good? Temper under control. It's time for tea. Might be a bit hot. And bed. Go to sleep then, and I'll, you know, remember what I said. <laughs> All right. So, how does Dave feel at the end of day one? I could probably do better than that, definitely. It's just like I had a lot of things going on at the time. It felt like things were uh, starting to come on top of it. The cat jumping in the paint, that just summed it up today, I think. You know, that, just, that only happens in films, that sort of thing. Dave is on a steep learning curve with his girls and multitasking. He started to lose his temper but regained control really quickly. I don't mean to shout at you, but how many times have I said to you to behave yourself and to sit down? If things do get on top of you, stop, walk away, count to ten and start again. It's day two for the Wilson family. Pack it in. And wife Jane reminds sedentary Steve to spend more quality time with the kids. <laughs> Come on, let's go and have some fun. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Are you ready? <laughs> Straight in. Steady. Yes. You ready, Dad? Go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
Yay! It was really nice seeing Steve running around after him because I'm normally the one that has to do all of that. Steve will stand and watch me push him on the swings and put him down the slider, but he'll just stand and do it. So it was really nice see him moving. <laughs> yeah. And Steve's got more activity on the agenda. They're off to the ice rink. Where did Finn go? I don't know. That's... Oh, oh Finn! Look! I'm going now, Dad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 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 I've had enough now. Turn it back. Bend your knees and keep yeah. your arms out by your sides. I know it feels a bit silly, but then if you keep looking where you're going as well, you, you end up having a nice posture as opposed to, uh, to being bent. He's not doing too bad. <laughs> Me and Danny were having great fun. We're spending time together, holding hands mainly, going around the side. Mitchell's thoroughly enjoying himself, going around the, the side as fast as he can. Finn's being good. <laughs> it was really nice to see them all out together having fun, and we don't do enough of that, so it would be really nice to keep that going and get him to spend more time with the children. <laughs> Day two for exhaust fitter Dave, who's about to explore more of his feminine side, thanks to wife Gemma's instructions. A text message, have I? Hi, Dave. Party at 4pm at Sarah's house. Girls in party gear and cook some fairy cakes. Fairy cakes? It's got to be fairy cakes, is it? Cos I found some butterfly cakes. Butterfly cakes? That is fairy cakes. Baffled by Gemma's fairy cakes, Dave opts for some nice and simple biscuits. This isn't a man's job, cooking cakes and stuff. I thought he said all the top chefs were men. Men are better at cooking than women, that's what he said. Cos, well, for me, I've never done it before. And I expect a lot of men are like, this, you know, the same as that, so... It doesn't come easy for us. <laughs> One point. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm going to kill Gemma for this. Thank you, Gemma. Unable to locate a rolling pin, Dave's decided to improvise. See how it goes. Not the best idea in the world, but much jump. Now I've got all my chances. Oh, it must be a wonderful world in Dave's head. <laughs> I've got a, a circle cutter, but... Oh, we've got heart ones in. I'm going to use a glass instead of a... A cutter. We've got a cutter, Save! What lovely heart ones. The part-time DJ is more used to spinning discs than cutting them, but after all that effort, the results are pretty promising. If I, I can do something like this, then that's a triumph for, for mankind. <laughs> Three days ago, Dad, Steve and Dave were left to juggle the trials of family life while their partners, Jane and Gemma, went on strike at a luxury spa. So, after some precious time away from their families, how do our mums rate their other half's progress? OK. Well, this makes a change, getting somebody else to bring the tea, doesn't it? Yeah. But he never makes me tea. I always have to make him tea. No, Steve doesn't either. And he usually <laughs> wants me to bring it to him on the sofa. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of work to do when we get back. <laughs> It's halfway through day two, and part-time DJ Dave is taking the girls to their friend's birthday. But he's never been to a kid's party before. Dave would most probably put them in things that don't match, or just he'd just probably put them in their like day-to-day -day clothes, but like the worst day-to-day -day clothes, most probably. <laughs> well, I'm going to prove her wrong today. I'm going to prove her wrong that I can get them dressed right. Can you do it currently? Just, it just goes to show that a man can do a woman's job, but I wonder if a woman could do a man's job. Ooh! Like, back in my day, my dad wouldn't have done that. And I do feel like he's probably probably missed out on something, you know? It's, it's like a bonding process, isn't it? You don't usually get to do it as a man, cos you're always at work and that, so... Having baked for the party, Dave and the girls are good to go. 
Got Ooh, the biscuits now. Like, We're gonna go for it now, are we? You go to this party now? Yeah. Come on, let's go to this party then. Yeah. Dave has never been to a kids' party before. I don't think he even knows what happens at kids' parties. Well, he's about to find out. Uh, I'm not really a party person, so. Well done. Have a good time then. This is not my idea of fun though. No. I'll probably just sit back and watch and you know enjoy the kids enjoying themselves. <laughs> I made some uh, cakes for the party. Oh, thank you, <laughs> 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 I hope they enjoy the biscuits. Is that nice? <laughs> no, they're chucking them back in. I have that one there because they, they've eaten yeah, these. So so that one there. <laughs> the kids are in two minds, but will Dave's biscuits get the mum's seal of approval? Is that nice or? Yeah, yeah. make me soft, but they're nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, with the challenge nearly over, Dave grabs a chance to reflect on his experiences. I think I've learned um, that we, we three, me, Georgia, and Cleo, we couldn't manage without Gemma. You know, I do miss her. Um, I hope she feels the same way about it as well. You know, as well, well, the way I feel about things now, that. She does do a good job around you, and we do appreciate what she does. Definitely. Right? Yeah. It's the morning of the final day, and while Steve's kids keep themselves occupied, the taxi driver tackles a bit of long overdue spring cleaning. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> well, Mum is not going to be impressed now, is she? Uh -huh. Shelf just fell off. I don't think I broke all the brackets that was on the shelf. Oh dear. I'm looking forward to going back to work. I'd rather get up at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> and take somebody down to the bus station or train station than have to put up with this all the time. Praying that Jane will indeed come off strike, Steve plumps for a romantic gesture. Before grabbing the chance to swap notes with our second dad, Dave. Here I haven't found the house work particularly hard, but, you know, it's, it's difficult. I'm not going to say it's not difficult, because no, it is. It's no. difficult. But he, these three have been brilliant. They've been good, have they? Yeah, but they've done their, their bit. I think I'm going to appreciate, you know, a bit more of what she does around the house. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing Jane coming back. Are you? Yeah, I've missed, missed her crazy. Her, yeah. 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 But what will Jane make of Steve's efforts? To Jane, since you went on strike, I've washed up, done the laundry, swept to mop the floors, yeah. fed the kids and animals, yeah. bathed Finn, cleaned under the sink and sofa. My feet are killing me and I've probably only done a fraction of the chores that have to be done on a daily or even weekly basis. It's really nice. He never ever buys me flowers. <laughs> it doesn't look too bad in here. There's a coffee cup there and the bin needs emptying. Hasn't put Finn's toys away before he's gone out, but apart from that, it's not too bad. <laughs> I'm itching to pick up that Mars bar wrapper and put it in the bin. <laughs> Time to welcome Mum home. <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> you come off straight. Yeah, but on one condition. <laughs> that I'm allowed to use the dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll do it now. <laughs> All right, then. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Time for our second mum, Gemma, to make a little inspection. Oh, my God! <laughs> I don't like that. What has he done? It's going to take me ages to sort this out. Pink. <laughs> I know I like pink, but... Not everywhere. Say hello. Oh, you've got paint on you. Oh, even the cat's got paint on it. But how will her family feel about having Mum back? Hello. Hi. 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 We missed you too, didn't we? We missed Mummy, didn't we? Yeah, we, yeah, we missed Mummy. So let's remind ourselves how both dads have handled the challenge. 
Taxi driver Steve swapped fares for fresh air, fags and fry-ups. While part-time DJ Dave got in touch with his feminine side. So which dad has made the greatest transformation? Steve has realised that Jane has a really tough job and has brought her flowers for the first time. Good on you, Steve. Oh, thank you for the flowers. <laughs> but Dave has been on a real journey. He finds it difficult to express emotion, but he really wants Gemma and the girls to know how much he appreciates them. So from now on, I think he plans to be more involved with his daughters and the house, which means a real change and makes him my dad of the day. Mum's on the stork award for most improved dad. Mm -hmm. That's good, man. Well done, Dave. <laughs>